Today I'm going to show you how you can germinate your own peach or nectarine pits and grow your own tree. Guys, welcome back to Green Farms Garden and another video. My name's Alex and if this is your first time here and you love gardening, videos, horticulture, ornamental plant care and DIY, then make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss a single thing. Man, that's so good. Full of flavour. Don't you just love a tasty peach? The peach or nectarine we grow from this pit isn't going to produce peaches or nectarines exactly as the same as the one we're eating. We'll talk more about what you can expect when growing your own peaches from seed at the end of the video and how we can potentially speed up the process of getting a fruit bearing tree and guarantee great fruit. Peaches and nectarines are from the same plant species, Prunus persica. Some trees are cultivated to grow this furry skin we know as a peach and some trees are cultivated to grow smooth skin, what we know as nectarines. But you can end up with both fruit on the same plant. Sometimes you'll get an odd nectarine pop on your peach tree or an odd peach popping onto your nectarine tree. So double bubble, baby. Peaches are a cold to moderate climate plant that do best in around zones four to nine. They need a certain amount of chill hours for them to be activated or triggered into fruiting. The chill hours needed to trigger fruiting is around 600 hours of coldish weather at about 45 degrees Fahrenheit or seven degrees Celsius. So that's about 25 days of coldish weather. So if you're living in a country that gets no cold weather, then growing peaches, apples, cherries, blueberries, that's not going to suit your conditions. So if we're going to germinate our peach pits, we need to imitate that natural cycle they would have in nature and give them a cold shock known as stratification. That's where we put our pit in the fridge for a few months to trigger it into germinating. Now we can make this super easy on ourselves and just plonk the pits right into the earth and let nature do its thing. But if you're like me and you love to tart around a little and not leave things to chance, then I'll show you some additional steps that you can take to greatly improve your chances of success. So first we want to crack open our pit. You could use a pair of wire cutters, a hammer, a vice grip, something what will gently crack it open without ruining, breaking that inner seed. This is a great time also to be able to see if you have actually got a, a viable seed inside that pit. Sometimes you're gonna crack it open and you're gonna see a shriveled up remains of there being a seed there. Oh, we've look, we've damaged it slightly there. Should be all right though. That's why it's beneficial to normally let your pit dry for a few days. The seed shrinks just a little bit, giving you a little bit more margin for error. Next, we want to hydrate our seed by popping it into a, a glass full of water for several hours until you see that it's gone nice and plump. If you notice that the seed, after it's been hydrating for five, six hours, if it's floating to the top, then it's a good chance that the seed's probably dried out too far, it's too far gone and it's probably dead. So once your seed's fully hydrated, next you want to take a kitchen towel, run it under the tap, get it all nice and wet, and then squeeze out the excess, placing your seed into the kitchen towel, and then give it a good sprinkle with cinnamon powder. Cinnamon powder is a brilliant natural fungicide, antibacterial. It'll keep your seed from getting moldy. So fold your kitchen towel around the seed, then pop it into a Ziploc bag or some tin foil. Then place the date 
what type of seed it is because it's amazing how easy it is to forget and then pop it into your fridge for at least two months. Every now and again, keep an eye on it, make sure that the towel is still moist, moist not wet, and if it is getting a little bit dry, add a few more drops of water just to re-moisten that towel. So after about a month when you do your little routine check, see how your seeds are getting on, you might notice some germination activity. As soon as you see that activity happening, a little root shoot coming out, you want to get them into your soil. So let's take a look at some seeds that I started about a month and a half ago. And let's get them planted up. So we started these about a month and a half ago. And there we are, look. Ooh, nice bit of root on it. Nice sized root on these. Be a nice time now to get these in a pot. Give your pots a, a quick wash, 10% bleach solution. That'll disinfect your pots and make sure you don't transmit any harmful funguses or diseases to your next plants. Once you're finished, just let your pots air dry and they'll be ready. So let's get these little newborns tucked up and planted into a pot. So we want to make a little hole. We'll make one with our thumb about an inch in. As you can see, it's not, not too deep. And we're just gonna gently place our seed in that hole, not too deep. And then we'll just pack him in nice and snugly, ugly. Again with this one, about, about your thumb, which is about an inch and a half, depending unless, you, unless you're a giant and you Thumbs are like six inches long, but um, normal people have got thumbs about two inches. So just stick him in like that and then just cover him up nice and snugly again. Brilliant. Then we're just going to give them a gentle watering. Being gentle not to disturb the soil. You could have done this before. Doesn't really matter. You just want to be careful. You don't want to cause a deluge. Wash them seeds right out there. Just take your time. So there, we're done. I'm going to get these now in a nice bright location where they'll get indirect bright light until they get maybe 20 centimetres, 10 centimetres, and then I'll give them more stronger light. So I'm going to put these probably under my grow lights or I might keep them here on the terrace so it's got a bit of shade from the midday sun when the sun gets quite aggressive. So what can you expect when you grow fruit from seed? Well, you can expect some genetic variation. Some plants and fruits will grow more true than others. And you hear the term, will it grow true to seed quite a bit? Basically means that if I plant the pit from this peach, will it grow a tree that'll grow fruits similar. It's never going to be exactly the same because you've got genetics, don't forget. It's not going to produce a clone, but will it produce something quite similar to the peach that I'm holding in my hand? And some fruits do, some fruits don't produce fruit true to seed. And what you'd end up getting is a wild variety. Who knows what it could be like? It could be fruit far different to the one holding in your hand. Some fruits that grow pretty true to seed are peaches, nectarines, mangoes, citrus, lemons, almonds. If you can think of any more, then make sure to let me know in the comments. Still, we're gonna have genetic variation within our fruit and the tree itself. The tree might end up being a poor producer. It could have lackluster growth and not be very vigorous. It could end up being sickly or sterile like your uncle Josh and never produce a single fruit. On the other hand, you might have a tree that's super vigorous and still a poor producer. Or you might end up with a tree that ticks most of the boxes and produces beautiful fruit. It's vigorous, grows well, resistant to pests. It's all a big genetic gamble on that big genetic 
roulette table. So one way we can get around all this genetic uncertainty is by grafting. So that's when we take a small branch or a bud known as a scion from a tree that we know has good production and produces good tasty fruit and we implant that then onto our seed grown tree. This way we get all the benefits of a seed grown plant with a nice proper root system and we get all the benefits of a cutting because a normal cutting if you do an air layered cutting it hasn't got a good root stock but this way you get all the benefits of that cutting which is basically a clone right on a proper seed grown root stock. Now you've got to admit that's pretty awesome it'd be like chopping my head off and sticking it on Chris Pratt's body. Oh <laughs> wrong body that's better peach trees grow pretty fast and they can start producing fruit from about three to five years on if you graft you could get that even sooner maybe down to about two years you could start seeing fruit on your tree that's not too bad years tend to pass by pretty quick do you know the best time to plant a tree well they say 10 years ago <laughs> You know what the second best time is to plant a tree? Well, they say today. So if you've not started, make sure you start immediately. Now, if you want to know how you can germinate cherry pits and grow a cherry tree, then make sure you hit that video that's just popped up over there. As always, it's been great to be able to catch up with you all. And I love to hear your feedback and how you're getting on, your success stories, any questions you might have. I'll do my best to try and get back to all of you sometimes it's a bit hard when I'm juggling so many things you can also catch me on Twitter or Instagram links are in the description and it's nice to be able to continue some of the discussions there share our plant pictures and any problems we might be having I hope you're all keeping well and safe and I look forward to seeing you guys next time